Well, we're jumping into this most famous of chapters in John's Gospel. We're just going to be looking at the first 21 verses. And this section all focuses around uh, what it means to be born again, what it means to truly be a Christian. And it has these incredible words in verse 16, For God so loved. And that's what I called the sermon, For God so loved. As always, I encourage you to take some time just to read the passage a few times for yourself. Look out for key characters and uh, important repetition. Make questions, question marks next to verses that you, you want further understanding on. And spend some time praying that God would open your eyes to see wonderful things about him. And I pray that this very familiar passage, which would be familiar to most of us, will challenge us and change us as we marvel at the great, great love that God has for us. And just before we go through the text as I normally do, I just do want to highlight this John 3.16. It's a famous verse for, for good reason, because it really does encapsulate the whole of John's Gospel. We've seen in John's Gospel that John is giving us evidence, evidence about Jesus, which calls for belief in Jesus. And that belief results in life, or leads to life through Jesus. And that we see in John 20, verse 30 to 31. And this verse, this section, gives us evidence that we see here these ideas of belief and life come out in this section too. So let's quickly just trace those key themes, so evidence, belief and life through this section. Nicodemus comes in this section and says to Jesus, you, you're doing these signs that no one else could do, which we've seen in chapter 3. So that is some of the evidence that he speaks of. Uh, Jesus, in response to Nicodemus, speaks about testimony and things that we've seen so more evidence evidence about Jesus which calls for belief in Jesus but what we see here is that Jesus says that some people don't accept they don't believe Um, you do not believe but then he also speaks about um, those that everyone who believes may have eternal life that whoever believes in him may have eternal life Again, whoever believes in him is not condemned, but then speaks again of those who do not believe. So there's a big push on what it means to believe in this section, believing the evidence about Jesus, and that belief leads to eternal life. So far in chapter 1 verse 4, John said, In him was life, and now for the first time, That life is spoken of as eternal life, life that begins now and goes on forever. And that is what Jesus came to win for us. Now in a story like this, it's often helpful to understand the flow of the story just to highlight who our key characters are. And the characters in this story are this man Nicodemus and our Lord Jesus. So just seeing where we've got Nicodemus um, speaking, or in focus, he's spoken of as Israel's teacher. And then he is, he's come to Jesus at night and he's having this uh, one-on-one with Jesus. Uh, he's meeting the king of the universe, and yet at this stage he doesn't know it. And we see this back and forth conversation between these two teachers. Um, because Nicodemus speaks about Jesus as a rabbi, a teacher, and Jesus then says, well, you are Israel's teacher, and you don't get this stuff. Um, Jesus then speaks about himself as the Son of Man. Again, it's a title we saw at the end of chapter 1. It's linking us back to uh, Daniel chapter 7, the Son of Man who is given all authority to approach the Ancient of Days um, and to rule. And he's spoken again of as God's one and only Son, and that whoever believes in Him won't perish. God didn't send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world. 
So our two characters in the story, Nicodemus and Jesus, having this conversation. But it's quite a funny conversation, actually, because before Nicodemus has even asked a question, Jesus gives his statement. Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. And that then gets Nicodemus uh, puzzling. What, what does it mean to be born again? Uh, what does it mean to enter the kingdom? Because only those who are born again can enter the kingdom, God's kingdom. Um, and so Jesus goes on to explain what being born again means. Um, it's everyone who is born of the Spirit. And Jesus rebukes Nicodemus, saying, You shouldn't be surprised at my saying that you need to be born again. Now, Nicodemus shouldn't have been surprised because this idea of being born again, and specifically when Jesus fleshes it out for us, when he speaks of being uh, born of water and the Spirit, that should have alerted Nicodemus to a prophecy in Ezekiel 36. You can focus in on verse 25 to 27 where Ezekiel says, this prophecy says that they would be cleansed with water and be given a new spirit. So this water and uh, spirit birth is uh, Jesus saying this time has come. Um, Ezekiel speaks of them being given new hearts, being made new people, as if they were born again. In John's Gospel, we also have these statements by Jesus, very truly I tell you, and we see three of them in this section. And Jesus is telling something that he wants Nicodemus to listen carefully to, very, very, very truly. I tell you, Jesus telling him the truth. No one can enter the kingdom unless they are born again. No one can, or no one can see the kingdom. No one can enter the kingdom unless they are born of water. And then he says, very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know. Jesus is telling Nicodemus about what he knows. He's telling him of heavenly things because he came from heaven. So he can speak of these things that Nicodemus can't quite comprehend at this stage. Linking in with this, uh, the signs, the testimony, uh, Nicodemus says, we know, uh, no one, and then Jesus says, no one can see. There's a lot of this type of, uh, these words, which all link together, knowing, seeing, understanding um, in this section. And Jesus also uses these uh, big words that everyone who believes may have eternal life that whoever believes shall not perish. Again, whoever believes, but whoever lives by the truth. So there's a big call in this passage to be among those who believe. And in this interchange, Nicodemus is asking these big questions. How? How can someone be born again? How can this be? And when we get to verse 14 onwards, um, Jesus really starts to answer that question, how? And verse 14, Jesus alludes to a story that comes from uh, Numbers 21. It's a, a story worth reading, particularly uh, from verse 4 to 9, where we're told the story of Israelites grumbling in the desert and snakes came and bit them as a punishment from God. But they cried out to Moses. They asked for God to show them mercy. Moses made this snake that he lifted up. And everyone who looked at that snake lived. And Jesus then takes that story and says, Just as, in the same way as Moses lifted that snake, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. That everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. And then he says these great words, For God so loved. The four there links us back. God's love is on display, is going to be on display as the Son of Man is lifted up. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. This word world 
Um, whenever it's used in the New Testament, it's always used with a sinful, rebellious connotation, which is magnifying the love of God for us. For God so loved the people of this world who had rebelled against him, that those within this world, everyone who believes, so he's speaking here about the elect, those who um, would come to faith in, in Christ. He gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. The sad verdict that we see in verse 19 is that the light has come. Um, light and darkness are also big themes in John's gospel. Uh, we saw in chapter 1 verse 5, um, 1 verse 5 says, The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not, and the darkness has not overcome it. But sadly here, just as Nicodemus came at night, we see here it says, well, the light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of the light, because their deeds are evil. So, Although God has displayed his love in the most amazing way, shining the light of the gospel into the darkness, people don't always accept this good news. And that's what verse 17 and 18 are showing us. Uh, it's magnifying the love of God, again just showing God didn't send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world. That's why Jesus came. He came to save the world. And then whoever believes in him is not condemned but whoever does not believe stands condemned already. So there is this dividing line between people and the dividing line pivots on what you do with Jesus. And that's what John is showing us. Uh, Jesus in this conversation with Nicodemus was showing that life has come. This eternal life is possible, being born again life, having life that begins now and goes on forever, it's come. But that life is only possible if you believe in Jesus, this one who is lifted up. And in 1 John 3 verse 16, it's a cross reference, it's worth looking at. So 1 John 3 verse 16 says, This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. And that's what John is showing us in this passage. This, the Son of Man being lifted up, is pointing us to the cross, where Jesus was lifted up on the cross to show us what the love of God looks like as he died for our sins. Now we are told in chapter 19 that this Nicodemus was there. He was there with Joseph of Arimathea uh, to claim the body of Jesus so that they could bury him. So Jesus was there as Jesus died. Uh, Nicodemus was there as Jesus died. This conversation must have been playing through his head at that moment as he saw Jesus lifted up. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. What a glorious truth for us to dig into. And I pray that you will dig deeply into this truth, that you will rejoice in the love that God has for you in his son. And that this will be a truth that we want to hold on to and hold out to others. So God bless as you dig in further.